Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. This is Cogan Cassius for IFM London. We're at the Nottingham Arena here for the press conference between Carl Froch and Youssef Mack and also Tony Bellew and Roberto Belonte with me. I've got Tony Bellew all the way down from Liverpool. How are you, Tony? I'm OK, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me again. Everything's gone well and I can't wait for Saturday. Um, obviously, since the last time I spoke to you, I think, obviously, the fight had just been announced between you and Belonte for this WBC silver title. Um, what do you know about Roberto Belonte? Have you done much studying of him? Uh, I've studied him, I've watched him, uh, he's a good fighter, he's very heavy handed with the left hook, but you know, he's, he's got a few technical frailties, shall I call it, you know, his defence is a bit leaky, he's not very good on the back foot, but listen, it's a test, it's a good fight and I'm, I can't wait to get in there with him. So just to clarify, um, you come through this fight, you have hopefully another final eliminator and then touch wood, a shot at Dawson. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the plan, but I'm happy if it is. I I'm really happy if it is. Like I say, this guy's ranked above me in every organisation. He's WBC number five. He's ranked above me in the IBF, the WBA. So, you know, he's ranked above me in all the top organisations. So I'm looking forward to getting in with him, doing a job on him and, uh, and getting rid of him because in this fight, it's, it's not the same tactics as it was for the Edison Miranda fight. It's a little bit different this time. There's a little bit more... Uh, emphasis on me going forward and I plan on going there and doing a destructive job on him. I don't believe he's seen anything like me before and when I touch him he's going to know about it. Is there many people coming down from Liverpool to Nottingham this week? Yeah, I've got a few hundred coming down, a uh, couple of coaches and it should be good mate. I know a load of Blues are getting here early in the day so they can watch me beloved Everton on the telly first so it's, uh, it's going to be good mate, it's going to be a great night. You know Carl's army gets behind me as well because I'm friends with them and stuff like that and Carl and uh, it'll just be one great night mate, I'm sure it will. Are you happy with where you are in your career at the moment? Without a shadow of a doubt. I'm, act I'm active, I'm busy. There's nothing worse than, than leaving a fighter that for four, five, six months at a time to fight. And there's nothing worse than not, not having a date as well. You know, how do you expect a fighter to go and rip the hoop out of himself or die for weeks when he's got no date and nothing to look forward to? It's not a good thing. So I'm given dates, I'm given regular things to do. I'm happy with where I'm at, mate. Uh, you know, I've got to thank Eddie for, for, you know, for believing in me and coming on board with me because they've gone through a lot of stick to, to stay with me too. I've got to thank Sky for giving me the opportunity and, and the most important people I've got to thank is my team. I've got a fantastic team around me. The gaffer, Gary, Fran, my dad. I've got good, team, good people around me and a good, strong team and without them, I couldn't do what I do, mate. I really couldn't. So I'm looking forward to Saturday and I can't wait. Did you watch um, Nathan Cleverley versus Sean Hawke on Saturday night? No, no, no. I don't watch fights that are 90%, 10% in, in someone's favour, mate. I really don't. I just don't see the point in watching them. I mean, I'd rather talk about the fact that you now have a tripod and you don't need somebody else to hold your camera, to be honest, mate, because this tripod is a lovely tripod. It looks brand new. Uh, it is brand new. Yeah, I thought it was brand new. Well, I don't think it, it's actually brand new out the bag. It looks like it's been lifted, to be honest, or come off the back of a lorry, one of them kinds of brand new. They're the kinds of brand new that I'm used to seeing, and uh, but it looks really nice, mate. It really does. I'm really proud of yeah? you. You've, you've come a, such a long, long way. Would you like to see uh, a receipt for this the next time I interview you? Would that put your mind at rest that I'm actually not like you, Tony? <laughs> we can all produce receipts, mate. I've got, I've got tons of receipts. Doesn't mean I bought what was on the receipt, mate, does it? <laughs> no, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful tripod, mate. It is. I'm gonna take your word for it. Listen, if it kicks off in this, in this uh, between you and Bologna in a minute, then I mean that might come in handy. It's been done before. It's people have been known to throw tripods at times, so it, it's a viable weapon. I'll be honest, I'm not down for throwing uh, tripods or chairs or stuff like that. I'm down for throwing the occasional head or hand, but not the tripod. It doesn't quite get me like the head or the hand. These press conferences, obviously, you know, the first time I was at a press conference with you was, you know, that, that infamous one you had uh, at the O2. But these press conferences you have, do you, what, what, what is it you're looking Because I know a lot of the time you sort of, you're fired up, you know, your attitude is I want to rip their head off in front of me. There's a little bit of talk there, but with Miranda, it didn't really go that way. And I, I don't really see, obviously, I don't think Roberto Bologna talks in English, so I don't think that's going to go that way this today, is it? No, I, you know what it is? It's a... Uh it, it, it's it's different things for different fights and for the Miranda fight I didn't need to be losing my mind in that fight I didn't need to be going nuts and going all out it really didn't in the Miranda fight I needed to box clever, use my brain and do what I need to do 
uh, listen, if somebody antagonises me, if somebody tries to wind me up or say things, I'm going to react. I'm not a person who can hide their emotions very well. I'll react. And 90% of the time, it won't be the reaction that people want. So if someone winds me up, if someone gets in my face, expect a reaction because for every action, there is a reaction. And usually, you will get that reaction from me. Just sometimes, if I'm... If I'm if I get the right people around me, like I did before the Miranda fight, we talked over and over and again, he could try and get in your face. I actually expected Miranda to do something daft, and I was prepared for it too. I think I might have done something daft back, but I was prepared for it, and I was ready. With this guy, bit of an unknown, but there's nothing now that anybody could do to me at a press conference at a way that I haven't seen before. It's old news to me, so press conferences don't mean anything. All as it is, it's just a chance to lay your eyes on someone gauge them a little bit Saturday night mate, is where the damage is going to be done and there's going to be serious damage done Saturday just finally from um, like you said from the from the press conferences from a head to head that's a, a standard thing after press conferences what, what what do you take from them head to heads is there something that's a fighter could give away or that you've noticed that they give away if they're a little bit nervous a little bit edgy about you know what's what might happen I believe I've done people at eye to eye conferences yet I believe I've had a few people like that but 90% of the time, it's just for the cameras, mate, it really is. Sometimes if there's needle in, you really can't stand each other, then, you know, someone might get an upper hand. And I don't think I've ever had anyone get the upper hand on me in that kind of way. So sometimes they can mean something, but it's very rare. As I say, they're just, they are what they are. They're a, they're a must, they're a must need, you know, everybody need. You need the press conference, you need to do it. Things need to be built. And uh, I mustn't say, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a... Bally getting in a car and coming all the way down here to go back, but I understand the necessary need for them. They're, 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 like I say, they're a must. They need to be done. Sometimes you can have a laugh. I actually enjoy it every time I get on a camera with you and now our new tripod. Tripod. <laughs> tripod. <laughs> tripod. I've got one for my iPad actually. And mine did fall off the back of a lorry. <laughs> no, it's uh, no, it's you know, it's good. I enjoy with you. I have a laugh. But you know, with ninety, like I say, with ninety percent of the other guys, it's it's serious. It's the same questions over and over again about some clown from Wales or who he's fought or what he's done. You know, I, I'm, I'm used to it now. So some of these interviews I enjoyed something different. Even though I did refer to what you were talking about. Yeah, but, but listen, just finally, yeah. um, I said finally before, so this is finally finally. Why wasn't you asked to present a mobo like David Price? <laughs> well, I'm not a celebrity. I, I, I'm. I'm not a celebrity. I'm usually the kid standing outside asking for autographs. <laughs> no, you know what? I wasn't supposed to go, to be honest. And uh, me, my best friend came up with a ticket for me, Danzi, and he just said, you know, what you want to do? So I thought, let's go. Let's go and watch a bit of Labyrinth and then watch him kick off and stuff like that. Guy nearly took me out when he sprinted past me off that piano. Nearly took me clean out. If he'd have took me clean out, then he would have had a, there would have been an earthquake and he wouldn't have known about it was coming. But uh, no, it was a great night. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice way to. Your mate David Price had ne never heard of John Holt or Gregory Isaacs. How do you feel about that? Listen, he mentioned Sean Paul, and I said, "Get the lights out! The lights is out!" And then his face was just like, "What the hell's going on here?" Like Sean Paul had won the record, and Price he was looking around like I thought Sean Paul was a clothes make. So you know, it's just I love Big Truck, mate. He's he's one of my closest friends in boxing. He's boss, but. Said I haven't given out the reggae award at the Mobos was a little bit far fetched if you ask me, you know what I mean? It would have been even far fetched for the likes of me. So you know, it was it was a good night, it was all good. Tony, listen, thank you very much for talking to from London. We'll see you at the weigh in on Friday and uh, Saturday night. Well, KO. Fireworks, destruction, and then we're gonna enjoy Carl Froch. Thanks for having me, mate. Keep tuning in to I Film London. Thank you very much. Nice one, mate. <laughs> Oh,